Hello, my name is Augusto and in this video I'll show you how to get the credentials of your Firebase project and configure them on the Firebase plugin for your Bubble application. So let me go to my computer here and here I have my Bubble application that I created to showcase a bit of how to configure it and I have already installed the Firebase Auth, Firestore and Storage plugin that you can find on the on the bubble marketplace for per for plugins all right so in here we need to get this information here the api key of domain project id storage bucket etc 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 uh, you can have two firebase projects one for development purposes and the other one for the live application and you can link them both here it's important to notice that in this case bubble has the the main branch uh, that is the version test of your application and the live one but when you link the firebase application only with this upper part it won't differentiate so you'll be using the your current firebase live application in the version test of bubble so beware of that um, but let let's get this information here to input that all right so here on my uh, console let me go back to the overview so so that you can see how i got there so i have i'm here on my console for the firebase project i can click the cog here next to project overview and hit project settings and go to the bottom of the page and where i can see the my firebase web application that i defined for this project and you can hit the config option here and it will showcase only the the credentials i must input there for the for the bubble application to know to which firebase project to connect to all right so here we have the api key the op domain the project id etc and we must simply copy that to the inputs here on my firebase settings so the api key the of domain without the quotes the project id and let me copy everything here all right while you guys seeing what i do that's all i don't want so august you're only recording a video to for me to see you copy and pasting things from one screen to another basically that it's that easy all right and now i get the app id and there are other two informations i must provide here the first one it's one we can input manually which is the offline support the firestore and the Firestore database has uh, a native form of supplying you with offline functionality that allows you to like retain changes made to the database while, while your customer or your user is not connected to the internet and when it reestablishes the connection it broadcasts these changes to the Firestore database. It can be desired sometimes but sometimes it it's not desired at all so we put this option here for you to set as false or true if you want to use the offline support i'll just hit false here because i don't want to to sh uh, i don't need to show you guys the offline functionality right now and the service account json this one is specifically for you to run the back end actions on bubble so the plugin has front-end actions that run on the user's browser and has some uh, actions that run on the bubble, bubble servers for them to run on the bubble services knowing which firebase application to connect to we must have a service account json to get the service account json you go here on project settings and go to service accounts and just ask the app to generate a new key value pair for your a new key for your uh, for your connection to the service account so you hit the generate new private key it will generate it for you ask you to store this key on the on your computer you're probably not seeing this right now because i'm only sharing the browser but i will open the the json file here and simply copy its contents in here so there you go it is configured just for you to see how the 
how this JSON looks like, when you open the file, it will be something like that. All right. So you just need to copy it and simply uh, paste it here on the settings. All right. And there you go. Your plugin is configured, but there is a security risk here because these credentials, well, these credentials, the API key, the off domain, etc., they are exposed on your front end. So it is important for you to restrict the API key to be only usable on the domains you allow. In this case, the domain of your bubble application. So there is a, a part of our documentation on the plugin that shows you how to do that. And I'll show you here. You must access, I, I even open it here because it shows the, the link to where you must go on the Google Cloud Console for you to restrict that. Let me open another tab here and change here for my app ID that I can get on my project's URL is this fur bubble example bbd83 here where it is so I paste it here and go to my Google console and that's not the account I'm, I'm currently authenticated on and okay it's it's asking me to to configure the Google Cloud account for this account because it's a brand new account so I didn't have it yet so here it is, the Firebase example, the Firebase bubble example, and there is a, a Firebase key generated here. I can get on this, on this key, let me just sum up. Here I am on the Google Cloud APIs and service feature, and I hit credentials, and the key generated by Firebase will be here, right? So when I get in this key, uh, I can see it is, actually restricted to some APIs, but actually what I want is not restricted by APIs necessarily, but I want to restrict it for websites. You can leave it as it was too, because I think there is, let me see, it's fire, fire stories here, real-time database, all right, cloud scale, no, 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 you can't, just don't restrict it, all right, and hit the website restriction one, and you can add the website of your bubble application here. So if you get this website here and paste it there, where it is. So you allow for bubbleapps.io on this subdomain to access your application. You must provide the root domain here and hit save. Now only when uh, when a function is run from this domain you authorize, it will be uh, this, this, where it is, the, the API key. Only then will this API key work. So if anyone funny enough to get your API key and try to do something funny with your application tries to do this, this it will be blocked by, by these restrictions. There is, of course, uh, a risk for them to run anything on the on the browser's console here they can just come here and execute some code that will talk with your Firestore database for instance that's why you must also provide security rules for your cloud Firestore and your storage uh, on the project on the Firebase project for it to restrict what the users can do uh, for, for instance, you can allow only to authenticated users to do stuff. Then they won't be able to do so on your browser's console when they are accessing your domain. All right. Hope that's not too confusing, but they, those are actually the two things we must configure to guarantee the security of your app. So you must secure your API keys. I actually have to check if this API key is the same one I, I got before. Let me see if on project settings this is the one. Okay, that's the one. And you must also provide security rules to Firestore for it to restrict what users can do even when they are on your bubble application domain, all right? So those are the two main 
and most important things you must do after setting up your credentials on your plugin. Hope that makes your application more secure and I'll see you guys next time.